those many blessings. Amen, brother. Amen. Got this around here. It must have been the worst storm that I had ever seen. We were taking all these prisoners to Rome. We hadn't seen the sun or stars in many days. And all hope to be safe was gone. As the waves had taken over, this man stood to his feet. I heard someone say Paul was his name. He didn't seem to be afraid, though death was closing in. And in the midst of us, he said the strangest thing. I believe God Right here in this storm With everything around me Telling me I'm going down And I believe a promise That He would bring me through The storm just can't stop His work so true I believe God This might be the worst storm That you have ever seen You're tired but just can't find your way out You feel like you're one step Away from letting go And faith somehow has turned into doubt Friend, don't be discouraged for the one inside of you said he'd be right there to make a way. And he knows how to calm the storm and let the sun shine through. So stand upon his word and say. can't stop his work so true I believe God Amen I like that say amen, amen. amen. Hallelujah Now if some of y'all want to help uh, we're going to gather around over here if y'all don't mind right after church and work on a few songs there uh, tonight we're getting ready for youth rally we're getting ready we got a lot to do a uh, long way to go short time to get there as the old saying goes <laughs> And uh, uh, I'm believing God that he's going to get us where we need to be. He always has. He's never failed us one time. And I believe God, and he's going to help us tonight. Let's take your Bibles tonight and turn to uh, Jeremiah, the book of Jeremiah, chapter 36. Do not, do not leave, do not get up unless you absolutely have to uh, as we bring this message tonight. It's extremely important. And uh, the youth rally coming up is a big burden and it's extremely hard physically, emotionally, financially on us. And the only way I ever know to do fight battles and get where you need to be with the Lord is by prayer and fasting. And so tonight I'm going to preach a different kind of a message uh, and I'm going to talk about fasting and uh, uh, what the Bible says about it. This is an unusual scripture. And every time I've every, ever read this scripture, it's grabbed me, but I've never preached on it. And I decided the other day, I've got to, I've got to say what the Lord put on my heart about this. Jeremiah 36 he said, uh, verse number 
4, Then Jeremiah called Baruch, the son of Neriah, and Baruch wrote from the mouth of Jeremiah all the words of the Lord. That's inspiration. Which he had spoken unto him upon a roll of a book. And Jeremiah commanded Baruch and saying, I am shut up. I cannot go into the house of the Lord. Therefore go thou and read in the roll. When you go to the house of the Lord, read in the roll. That's the words of God. Which thou hast written from my mouth the words of the Lord in the ears of the people in the Lord's house upon the fasting day. And also thou shalt... Look at that phrase there in the middle of that verse. He said, I want you to read these words upon the fasting day. They had set aside a day and said, that's the fasting day, and I want you to read them words on that day. I want to preach on that this evening, the fasting day. Many people, because they never hear it in church, have never even heard a fast. I've had bunches of people ask me, it, it, really, do people really do that? They go to church for years and years and years and years and years. And a lot of people say, Brother Danny, exactly what is fasting? Fasting is simply this. Fasting is a deliberate abstaining from physical nourishment, food, in order to seek God's blessings and power or help. Fasting is not a hunger strike. It's not like, we're not going to eat till you do what we want you to, God. That's not it at all. Fasting is not trying to talk God into doing something. He's more than willing. Fasting gets us in the shape so that he can work and give us what we need. And so I'm going to preach about that tonight. And it is scriptural according to that verse. It is scriptural. They had in the Old Testament a fasting day. Well, that day is Easter. That day is Sunday. That day is the day we go to sing. That day, that day is the fasting day. They set aside a day and fasted, even though the Pharisees now had turned this into a ritual by the time the Lord came, does not mean that we shouldn't believe in it, preach it, believe it, and practice it. We should. The Pharisees had fasted twice. They just turned it into a show and it meant nothing and was no good. Just because people do that don't mean we shouldn't do it right. The Lord said not to leave the other undone. Now, uh, before I bring the, the thought of the message, excuse me, it's going to be real short. Uh, fasting, when you fast, you are praying that God will work in, in your life. Anything that's a problem in your life, if you're having physical problems, fasting helps. If you're having marriage problems, fasting definitely helps. Um, as, as much as any seminar you can go to, fasting definitely helps with uh, uh, spiritual matters, clearing out your thoughts, making you think clear. When I go preach a revival, uh, and I got to preach something down this week down in Archdale, North Carolina, and uh, on the day that I fast, Honest to goodness, I used to think it was coincidence, but I, it kept happening over and over and over. I, 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 on the day that I fast, my thoughts would be just as clear and my memory would be as sharp as a knife. It just, it just you think clear. I mean, think about it. When you, when you eat a big old meal, what do you want to do? You don't really want to think clear. You just want to lay down and just, uh, uh, just like that and take a siesta. Ain't that right? Is that the, I say that right, y'all? Yeah. Uh, uh, you want to just uh, not think for a while. It dulls the senses. Food does. Now, uh, fasting physically will help you tremendously. I and any doctor that knows his stuff will tell you as a body goes through a cleansing of fasting, then it helps you physically. I, I have a preacher friend of mine. I've told you this before. He had ear infections, continual ear infections. He'd have to go to the doctor, get an antibiotic, and get on it. I'm, I'm, a, I'm very skeptical of antibiotics. I'm not a doctor, but I'm very, I don't like antibiotics. I don't believe in taking antibiotics unless you have to, and I'm not sure they're even right for you then. But I guess you have to sometimes. But uh, he said he'd go to the doctor, 
and get an antibiotic to get his ear infection cleaned up. He said him and some of the men of the church got a burden to fast for their church. They started fasting on Saturdays. All the men of the church, they had fast on Saturdays, not eat nothing, just drink water or, or whatever they drank, juice or whatever. And he said that they would uh, uh, do that. And he said he noticed something. He said his ear infection cleared up and did not bother him a bit. You know why that is? Because when you're fasting, instead of sending all your energy toward busting up that food and digesting it, your, your energy, your blood goes to wherever, what's wrong with you and heals it. It is a fact. You fast regular, it'll lower your blood pressure. It is a fact. You fast regular, it will lower your cholesterol. It is a fact. You fast regular, it'll help you if you have a weight problem. If you would like to lose weight, most people would. Most people in America have a problem with, with just eating so much and getting bigger and bigger and bigger. I'm not, I'm not, I'm, and I really, we all do just about. I know you laugh at me, but I, but I, I, I have to, I have to, I have to uh, watch. what I, If I eat everything I wanted all the time, I'd be big as this pulpit. I would because I love food. I, I love it. Uh, but fasting has a very much spiritual benefit. And the reason why is because when you fast one day, your stomach shrinks a little bit. So the next day, it don't take as much to fill you up as it did the day before you fasted. So you've gained something there. And you lose a couple of pounds. And then you do that the next week and you look up more. And you do that the next week and you lose a couple more. In six weeks like we have now, you can easily lose eight to ten pounds by the youth rally. That is not why we fast. That is not why we, that I'm preaching this. I'm just saying that's, that's an added bonus that you get. Dr. J. Harold Smith, great preacher in this country years ago, he went on a 40-day fast several times. You say, I don't believe that's true. There's been at least three people in our church who have gone on 40-day fast. I never have. Don't look at me like I'm something spiritual. I, I'm not, man. It's, I've, I've got a strong, fast, hard, quite loud hard metabolism and buddy I, I you know I, I'm, I'm, I'm strung high so it's hard for me to do that but he, J. Harold Smith fasted and he said when he got through with that fast every blemish the spots on your skin every blemish in his skin would clear up like that he said his tongue turned as pink as a, as a little child you know why you know why your tongue gets uh, got that white junk on it when you fast and you have a headache, it's your body getting the toxins out of it. And it's a medically proven fact. That's that white stuff on your tongue. That's sick and even think about it. Your breath stinks and everything else because uh, it's, it's getting the poison out of you. And so tonight, those are just a little bit of, of inflammation. If you have inflammation, it will definitely. Now, there's a lot of people that believe sugar and carbohydrates feed cancer. I don't know if that's true or not. I'm not a doctor. There are, there are uh, what we call health doctors and organic people and stuff that have a lot of different beliefs on that kind of stuff. And they say that eating sugar on cancer is just like putting fertilizer on grass. I don't know if that's true or not. Uh, but I do know one thing. Uh, you know as well as I know, a lot of sugar can't be good for you. Anything tastes that good can't be right. Uh, uh, but, uh, and I, I'll talk more about that in a minute. Uh, but let me just say a few things about it this evening. And well then, I, I, I'm saying to you uh, this evening, we're, we're gonna have a fasting day. We're, going, we're not just gonna wake up one morning and say, I think I'll fast today. You'll never do it. If you say, I'm going to try to fast today, you'll never do it. I can't do it like that. I've never fasted one day when I said, I'm going to try to fast today. You'll, you'll give up before 1 o'clock. Uh, most people will. You know what I do? I make it the night before, I say, all right, Danny, you ain't getting nothing. Shut up. Ain't no use to cry. Ain't no use to holler. No. And I make up my mind. That's half the battle. The other half is just doing it. Half the battle is making up your mind. And so we're going to say three things about it tonight and uh, uh, quickly, and I'll let you go. Number one, the fasting day is a day to get serious with God. A fasting day is a day to get serious with God. Is there anybody here tonight that thinks we don't need to get serious with God? 
Lord have mercy. I've never seen such a flippant, haphazard, uh, uh, slipshod way of serving God in my life than most Christians have today. It's all right if we do it. It's all right if we don't. It's all right if we go to church. It's all right if we don't. It's all right if we read the Bible. It's all right if we don't. It really don't matter. A fasting day will help you to get serious with God. When I fast, I, I read my Bible. Of course, I read my Bible every day. But I try to say, now today, I'm not going to turn the TV on. I'm not going to I'm not gonna, uh, 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 do anything like uh, for pleasure, for the flesh. I'm going to get serious with God. And, and, and that's what they do. You get down to business and you get serious with the Lord. Jonathan Edwards preached that famous sermon years ago called Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God. When Jonathan Edwards got through with that message, there were grown men holding on to the pews or the seats in that auditorium, scared they were going to drop into hell at any moment. And people try to say, boy, I'll say what Jonathan Edwards said, and it, and it don't work. Say the very, you can get up here and say that very same sermon, and it has no effect on me. You know what had an effect? Jonathan Edwards never ate a bite for for three days and nights I think, before he brought that message. It is a day to get serious with God. It is a day to read the words of the Lord. It is a day to get your priorities straight. It is a day to get what's really important in mind. I, I, you know what I do to myself sometimes as I'm, as I'm getting older? Uh, I begin to think and I think uh, uh, every birthday and I start thinking, you know what now, one of these days I'm gonna get on up there if the Lord don't come and I don't die and I wanna be able to look back and say, I'm glad I did this. I'm glad I did that. I'm glad I did the other. Now, I've already got a lot of regrets, but I've got a lot of days where I can say, thank God I got in a day for the Lord that day right there. I'd like to be able to look back when it comes my time to uh, get old and die that I'll say, I'm glad I did this. I'm glad I did that. And listen, people, it's time to get serious with God. We want God to move at the youth rally. God don't move at the youth rally because we rent the fair ground or because we bring in busloads of kids or because Phil kids there or because we're out of hamburgers and hot dogs. God don't do that. God moves in answer to serious, earnest prayer excuse me, and fasting of his people. Ladies and gentlemen, when people in the Bible want to get serious with God, they fasted. You know Ruth over there, she went in to see, uh, uh, see the king and she was going to uh, or Esther and Ruth and all them when they was going to intercede for the people and buddy she went in there that day and she went in there before the king and they said now look you're going to have to fast for me because I'm going in here to see the king and if I perish I perish you know what she did she said my people are in trouble we need the move of God we need God to intervene I'm not eating you don't eat, let's fast and let's ask God to protect us. I'm calling on Shining Light Baptist Church here tonight. Some of you are sitting there right now and you're thinking, well, I don't care, I ain't gonna fast, my life's all right. That's fine, if that's what you wanna do, help yourself. No pressure intended at all. But I believe there's some people here tonight that say, Brother Danny, we do need God. Brother Danny, we do need the Lord. Brother Danny, I'm not satisfied with the way things are. I'm not happy with my family the way it is. I'm not happy with my kids or my, my marriage or my job or my everything. I'm not happy. There's empty seats in here tonight. There's places that need to be filled here tonight. I'm telling you, it's time to get serious with God. God's been so good to us. We ought to get serious with him. Amen. Number two. Number two. This will be quick. Fasting is a, die, is a day, the fasting day is a day to deny the flesh. You feed the flesh six days, it won't hurt to deny it one day. You say, Brother Danny, I've got to work, and if I go to work, I've got to have energy, and I ain't got no energy if I don't eat. I promise you, I promise you. I felt like that many times before. A lot of times somebody in here will shake my hand, and they'll say, Danny, your hands are freezing. What's wrong with you? Nothing. Nothing wrong with my my heart beats slow, uh, and uh, and uh, I, I, when I fast, your blood don't circulate like you freeze. Man, you'll be freezing to death. And the more you fast, the more you freeze. And you know what? You know what that does? That denies the flesh. I'm going to give you a little personal testimony tonight, and you've heard me say it before. Half of this hunger stuff is in our mind. I know that because on Monday. I don't eat anything 
until 12.30 or 1 o'clock. Never. I always go run in the gym. Spend, I shoot 100 free throws, and I run, play one-on-one with this guy over there. Me and him have a good time. That's preacher's day where they all go play golf. I go run the gym. And, uh, and I go to the bank. I take care of bills. I mow my grass. I do stuff. I make radio programs most of the evening on Monday. That's what I do. And I don't even get hungry, especially when I'm playing ball. I'd rather play basketball than eat a steak. Really. And I mean that. I enjoy it. Some preachers like golf. Some pre- preachers like to fool cars. Some I like to play basketball. And I, go, and I don't even get hungry. And when I leave there, I've got an apple and a banana and a pack of crackers. I learned to eat crackers from Mighty Mike. He taught me that. And uh, he said, pack of crackers and a Pepsi, Brother Danny. That's what he eat for dinner every day. Ain't that right, Miss Phillips? Every day. And, but anyway, and then, then you eat, you know, go Taco Bell or something or uh, go to Ingles and get a chicken sandwich or, or Walmart. And, and I do real good try to do that. Now, listen. On Tuesday, I usually eat about 12.30. On Wednesday is my fasting day. And at 10 o'clock on Wednesday, I'm saying, God, I'm hungry. God, I want something to eat. Now, what is that? It's my imagination. I know I ain't getting nothing, and it's already a hollering. Throw me something down here. Shut up. You better throw me something down here. I'll hurt you. I make a hunger pain. Hush. That's what I do. You say, you're crazy. Maybe I am. But I have that conversation with myself. And I say, you ain't getting nothing. I'm starving. No, you're not. Shut up. You better. I'll make you sick. Well, you're not. You go ahead. You're not. How come yesterday you didn't say nothing? Because I know I was going to get something at 1230. It's 1030 and I'm already starving. You know what that is? That ain't hunger pain. That's in your head. When you say, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, I'm going to pass out. Uh, I don't think I'm going to make it. I don't think I'm going to make it. It's, you, you tell, uh, see, if I don't eat to 1230, if I don't eat to 1230, it's usually 2 o'clock before I really start feeling hunger. Now you say, well, Brother Danny, Lord, if I can make it to 2 o'clock, I'd be doing good. Here's what you do. Here's what most of y'all do. And I ain't fussing at you. Everybody's got whatever works for you. You wake up in the middle of, uh, don't matter what time you get up, you come through the house like this, a wiping you, I like that, and go straight down there and pull that toaster out and put something in there, uh, a toast or a bagel, or put something on there, or heat up something in the microwave. You ain't even checked to see if you're hungry. You're just going to eat, bless God. It's, you're up, it's time to eat. And, uh, and uh, honestly, honestly, I don't know if that's the right thing to do or not uh, because it's out of habit, and uh, you're just doing it just because it's time to eat. It's time to eat, and I'm eating, whether I'm hungry or not. It wouldn't hurt you a little bit to once a week deny the flesh. Deny the flesh. You know what Paul said? Paul said, in fastings, often. In fastings, often. There's no command says you got to fast. There's no command that tells you how long, when, or how. But Paul said, I'd do it often. But if the Apostle Paul felt it necessary to fast often, what should me and you be doing in 2019 when all hell's breaking loose on the church? Brother and people are giving up right and left. People are falling out of church, quitting church like flies. Preachers getting out of the ministry. If the Apostle Paul felt it necessary to fast often, me and you surely, surely ought not ought to feel the same way. David said, I humbled my soul with fasting. They call it a body cleanse. Well, we call this a spirit cleanse. We call it a spirit uh, cleanse. We are in a pleasure mad, food addicted, phone addicted generation. Leave that phone off for a while. Turn the TV off a little while. Beg God in your prayer closet. Beg God when you go to work. Sometimes I'll be fasting, I'll come and I can smell food coming up the stairs and she's fixing the kids' eggs and it smells good, brother. And I'll, and I'll come in and she'll say, oh, I'm sorry. And I'll say, it's all right, don't worry about it. My mind's made up. Not eating. I've said it to steakhouse with people. I have. And just say, it don't bother you if your mind's made up. If your mind's made up. You say, well, Brother Danny, I just can't do that. Yeah, you can. I don't care if you've got hypoglycemia, brother. You can fast a meal or two. 
You sure can. You sure can. Don't tell me you can't and don't tell me you don't need it. Sometimes I say on Sunday night, because I can tell when I'm eating too much sugar. I can tell it. You learn your body after all this many years. You can learn what you can do, what you can't do. And uh, uh, I remember about, I don't know, 15 years ago, I quit drinking soft drinks for a while. Pepsi, that's all I ever drank. And uh, I, uh, Pepsi's bad. I think Coke's worse. The only thing you can drink worse than that is Mountain Dew. That's really bad. And Sun Drop's even worse than that. And, I mean, you talk about sugar and junk. I mean, gumming up your veins. That gums up your veins, your blood vessels and stuff. Like syrup gets in there and just hard in your blood vessel. And I can tell when I'm doing too much. So I quit. I quit, and I started drinking all water. All my girls was on. Remember when the Atkins diet came out? Remember that? Long time ago. Everybody was on the Atkins diet. And uh, Carrie told me, she said, Daddy, you can eat all the meat you want. You can eat all the cheese you want. You can eat all the eggs you want. And I said, well, man, I can handle that. That's the kind of diet I've been looking for. And I said, what can't you eat? She said, bread and, and pasta. No macaroni and cheese, no spaghetti, no, 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 uh, no uh, anything like pot, no bread, and no sugar. I said, I can handle that. And I went, I, I done it for a few days, and I went to the Golden Corral, and I eat steak and green beans, and I couldn't get full. I eat and eat and eat and eat and eat, and I, my stomach was hurting, and I wasn't full. I was dying for something sweet. I, I thought I'd give $10 for one of them big hot rolls. You know what that is? <laughs> I remember thinking, I had no idea that I was that addicted to carbohydrates and sugar. Carbohydrates and sugar. And I was hooked on it. Well, I do that once in a while. You know when I backslid at one of the youth rallies when I'd been fasting a whole lot? And I mean, I done got skinny and, and pale and weak and everything else. And after the youth rally, I was shouting happy. A bunch of people got saved. And I said, bless God, bring me a Pepsi. And I drunk a fool out of a Pepsi. And I thought, man, that was good. And if you ain't drunk one in a long time, when you do drink one, it tastes like pure sugar. It tastes like somebody's putting sugar in your mouth by the spoonful. You forget how sweet that, that junk is. And it's a mistake for you people to let your kids just run to the refrigerator and get soft drinks, soft drinks. You're, you're hurting them kids. I'm telling you, you're going to regret that one these days. I'm not saying it's all wrong, but once in a while it's all right. But I remember I, I drunk one. Two or three days I drunk another. Two or three days I drunk another. And I got back on them. I drunk one last night. Night before, pray for me. I'm like one of them addicts, right back to the old sins. Do I believe it's a sin to drink soft drinks? Not our sugar, not in moderation. But you cannot live off sugar and bread and sweets and junk all the time. Yeah, you're going to kill yourself living like that. So what I do on Sunday night, some night, I don't know if I'll do it tonight or not, but I, sometimes on Sunday night I go home and I say, all right, no sugar, Danny until Tuesday night. Tomorrow, I go to Walmart. I go to that little thing in there in the middle where it's got something hot, hot stuff in it and get chicken bites or something like that, you know, and eat it with some potato chips. And potato chips are carbohydrates, but they're not sugar. And I don't eat no ice cream and no Pepsi tomorrow at all. And tomorrow night about 9.30 or 10 o'clock, I'd give $20 for a Pepsi. Man, I want uh, Something says, just go on over and get that Pepsi. No, just go on and get it. You've done good today. Go on over there and get it. No, and if I don't make up my mind, you know what I'll do? I'll go get it and eat Snickers bar with it. And I get ice cream. Let me tell you something that's good. <laughs> Since we're talking about food, <laughs> right before we fast, <laughs> get, you some, get you some real good vanilla bean ice cream, like Briars, and you put, you get you a bowl full of it. We'll fill it up. Bless God, if you're going to do it, you might as well do it right. And, and get them uh, chunky chocolate chip cookies, the, them in the, the brown, I forget what you call them. Is it Keebler's and Nabisco or one of them? The real dark brown chocolate chip and 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 
do them in your hands like that and crunch them up in that ice cream and then take chocolate syrup and squirt it all over that and pour milk in that and you mix it up, son, I'm telling you, brother. That right there, that right there is good. It's like a real thick milkshake chocolate with, with cookie chunks in it. I had that last night. And I'm telling you, on that Monday night, I'd give $20 for a bowl of that ice cream and that Pepsi. But something weird happens. Tuesday night comes, and I think, I don't really care if I have, one, have it or not. And if I just eat some stuff on Tuesday night, by Wednesday night, it's almost like I don't even want it. It's that first day. You, you get a habit. You get a habit of doing, and I'm telling you, once a week, you need to break that, deny your flesh, and say, set the reset button. Let's start all over again. You're not eating today. Hush, you can have something tomorrow, and it'll help you. God will bless you. Amen? It's a shame. I heard this week that a woman sold her daughter, sold her daughter to pervert for $400 and done this from the time that little girl was two to five years old for three years and she made money off selling her daughter to a wicked man. Stuff like that ought to put us on our face begging God to help some of these kids. We had kids here this morning. I wouldn't say, I wouldn't tell you the situation because there's people here that's close to this kid and, and, and I wouldn't want it to get back to them. There's kids here this morning that live in an unbelievable situation. Bad enough to where it's Daddy and boyfriend both in the same home with mama. In this church, and we can't just prance in here like everything's all right and no, we don't have no need. God, help us. We can't deny the flesh one day out of seven. One day out of seven, y'all. One day out of seven. You know what irks me to death? And you heard me a minute ago. I love basketball. I love it. Sometimes I feel like I like it too much and I have to back. I say, wait a minute, Lord, wait a minute, Lord. I, I'm, and, but you know what irks a fire out of me? I was preaching revival not too long ago and I had on a certain color of jacket and a certain color of tie. And when I walked, not even in this state, I walked in the door and people started saying, yeah! I said, what? They said, yeah, you're with us. That's our team right there. And they named a certain college football team. I said, what? I don't, even, I don't even know what you're talking about. Yeah, that's our colors there, man. Somebody else came out and said, yeah, man, he's with us. Yeah, I'm glad to see you with that on tonight. And it was over and over and over and over. And then sometimes the preacher gets up and say, all right, we're all pulling for so-and-so. We're all pulling. I'm about to gag. Listen, people, I love basketball. You know, I love sports. I like it. But for heaven's sake, has it got to the point where college basketball means more to us? You can get a bigger reaction from most Baptist churches talking about Carolina and Duke than you can somebody getting saved by the grace of God. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. I wouldn't care if either one of them ever won another game. Anybody with a name like Blue Devils, Anybody that said if the sky's not, if God's not a tar hill, why is the sky Carolina blue? Blasphemy. I'm not saying don't, I'm, listen, if one of them's playing somebody else, I'm for them. But I'm not going to lose my head over it. I'm not going to go crazy over it. I'm not going to worship sports. And brother, I'm not, the, the people get more tore up about their team losing a game than they do if attendance is low or the bus tires up and the bus kids don't get to come. That's what ought to tire us up. I'm not fussing at you for enjoying sports. Lord have mercy, everything ain't a sin. I mean, it's okay to enjoy. It's okay to pull for your team. That's fine. But it, it irked me that night. They kept saying, oh, you got on our colors. You got on our color. I thought, is that all you people can think about? What's wrong with you? Years ago, they used to have what they call quitting meetings. And in these quitting meetings, they had a revival, and a preacher come in, and everybody quit. 
Whatever you're doing wrong, you quit. And they said, who's quitting this? They quit smoking. They quit drinking. They quit cussing. They quit being hateful to their wife. They quit being hateful to their husband. They quit this. And one lady came out and they said, what are you quitting? She said, I ain't been doing nothing and I'm going to quit doing that. And I'm going to get on fire for God and do right. That's good. Amen? That's right. Uh, my, you know what my daddy's philosophy was? Sunday school teachers, bus workers, church members. Here's my daddy's philosophy. Don't call in sick. Crawl in sick. That's how serious you got to be with God's work. Don't call in sick, crawl in sick. That's rough, ain't it? Number three, and this will be last. The fasting day is a day to readjust your vision, to see souls. Life is short. I was marriage counseling another night and heard a man say this. That's what he said. And this Christian, most people feel like this. This couple's about ready to separate, half separated. And this man looked and said, look, life is short. The main thing is to be happy. And that was his advice to a marriage couple. You know what that, tra translate that? Life is too short. If y'all going to fuss and fight, just get divorced and find somebody you can be happy with. And you know what I said? Life is short. It is, buddy. It's too short to please yourself and get what you want. Like, do right and serve God and stay together and work your problems out because eternity's long. We're going to be there a long time. And God don't care if you're happy. God wants you holy. I mean, he, of course he likes for his kids to be happy, but that ain't his main priority. The main thing in life is not you being happy. You say, well, the main thing is if you're happy. I remember before we got married, uh, people told me that all the time. Well, Danny, you just do whatever you think because the main thing is that you're happy. And I remember thinking, you're crazy. What Bible you been reading? There's nowhere in the Bible where it says the main thing is for you to be happy. You know what the main thing is? Be right. Be right. It don't matter if you're ever happy a day in your life. Be right. And God will bless you with happiness if he wants to. If he don't, don't worry about it. Be right. Do the right thing. See the bus kids coming from South Carolina. See that bunch coming. Brother Ronnie's planning on bringing probably 100. Them kids will never see it, never hear it, never feel it like they'll see it, hear it, and feel it at the youth rally. You know what makes a difference in that? There's people sitting right in here in this room tonight setting a fasting day and saying, Dear Lord, would you let those kids feel your power? I've had people tell me, they said, When I walked on the grounds over there, I felt the presence of the Lord. That comes from people praying Amen. and fasting. Listen, y'all. Listen to some preaching on hell. The day that you fast, you got your phone, you got YouTube. Put some, put some Charles Lawson hellfire sermons in there and feel kid hellfire. Listen to a sermon on hellfire. Do people still go to hell? Do they? Yes. Has God ever put hell out of the Bible? No. Is it still down there? Yes. Is it still hot? Yes. Are they screaming? Yes. That'll help you. That'll help you. How long has it been since you sat down in your house and listened to a sermon on hellfire? The old song said, see our fathers and our mothers and our children sinking down. Brethren, pray in holy manna will be showered all around. See the bus kids. Oh, Lord. See our fathers and our mothers and our children. My heart broke tonight some of the folks in our church. It hurts. It hurts. I know I come in here and I get up here and preach and everything. And I can still shout, but my heart is hurt. See our fathers and our mothers and our children sinking down. Brethren, pray and holy manna will be showered all along. Couldn't we fast today? Couldn't we set aside a day and say, dear God, how long has it been since your family was really excited about coming to church? 
How long has it been since you really wanted to jump up and testify? How long has it been since you couldn't wait but until Saturday to get to go busy? I can't wait. Saturday, I'm going to get out there and I'm going to witness. How long has it been since you really felt like you was on fire for God? How long has it been since everything was right in your heart? That's what you do on the fasting day. You readjust your vision. Sometimes that's to set yourself down and say, now look, let's get our priorities straight. You have to work. You have to pay your bills. You have to keep your house up. You have to paint it. You have to mow your grass. You have to raise your family. There, there is time for uh, 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 relaxation and recreation. I, the other day, before I went up there to preach in, in, in Charlotte, it was real nice that day and I hadn't been up in the woods in a long time. I got all them woods behind my house, and I just started walking up in the woods. And you can pray while you walk in the woods. And I just walked. If you can't run, walk. Everybody in here can walk, except Frankster. And he's about there. He can do it now a little bit. Everybody in here can walk. If you can't run, walk. Just walk, 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 walk. And I walked up in the woods and around. And there's just something about getting out there in the woods and getting away from everything that just clears your head and, and clears your mind. Believe it or not, playing ball does that to me. When I'm playing basketball or I'm running, it just like it just clears your mind. It just clears everything out and you reset and you can think about your burdens and your problems. Whatever it is that you can do like that, 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 uh, uh, that sort of relaxes your mind. But on the fasting day, get your Bible Walk up in the woods, go up in the prayer closet and say, Lord, I'm sorry that I don't even care like I should. God put a burden on me. See our fathers and our mothers and our children sinking down. Brethren, pray in holy manna. We'll be showered all around. A fasting day. There is nothing but good can come out of it. Nothing but good. Every way around, you save money, you're healthier, it, it, it'll clear your eyes up, or you, you got, you know, make them, your eyes clean and clear and white. It will lower your blood pressure. It'll, it'll do all kinds of things. Not to mention, clean your heart out so that God may bless you. The fasting day. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Miss Desi's going to come play something softly. Every head bow and every eye closed. We'll not have singing. We'll just search your heart there for a minute. Every head bow and every eye closed. Are you listening? Every head bow and every eye closed. She's playing softly. You ask the Lord, what wilt thou have me to do, Lord? I pray in Jesus' name that you would help our church. Let us be what you wanted us to be for the glory of God. Have your way in our hearts this season. Oh God, please Lord, I pray as we begin our fast tomorrow, I pray Lord that you'd honor it. Lord, we're not much, but God, we want you to move. We want you to bless. We want you to come down in great and mighty power. And I pray you do a great work, we pray. I love you, Lord. We're not, Lord, I, I beg you, I beg you to help us. Come down in this church. Lord God, restore those that are out tonight. Bring them back where they need to be. Lord God, get a hold of them. Reach out there and get a hold of them. May the Holy Ghost be so strong in here, Lord, that people will know that you're real, that you're able. Have you in our hearts this evening. Do what ought to be done in every life. We we'll thank you and praise you for it. In Jesus' name we pray and for his sake. Thank you, Lord. I'm still praying tonight. Amen. Amen. I'm going to wait just a few seconds. I'm still praying tonight. God's speaking to your heart. God's speaking to your heart. Amen. The fasting day. Isn't that a, isn't that a neat little phrase? The fasting day. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. The fasting day. God will bless you. Amen. 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 All right.
back.